Eric Salahub here, online instructional coach, and this screencast is just going to offer some reflections on various course models, traditional lecture style classes, uh, the flipped classroom, hybrid classes, and online classes. And in specific, what I want to talk about is how do each of these models consider the instructor roles and responsibilities and the student role and responsibilities. And so I'm going to be talking about how these considerations might help us think about course design issues and what it means to be a teacher, but also how do we as teachers think about um, these different course models in terms of metacognition, in terms of how we think about our teaching and what happens inside of the classroom and outside of the classroom. and how do we let our students in on this? Um, how do we help students kind of do that metacognition about their, their learning in the context of the kind of course they're signed up for? So um, this is really just brainstorming and I'm sending this out with the hopes that it might engage someone else or more, a few more of you into thinking about this stuff with me. And if you have, you know, definitely email me back or pick up the phone and give me a call. Um, you know, really these are ideas kind of in process of being formed and that's why I'm making this. Um, all right, at the top here I have just a really a chart that's trying to get at um, what sorts of things do instructors do um, in the teaching and learning context and then what sorts of things do students do in that context. And I am assuming that instructors are thinking within this context of six hours for a three credit class. I realize six hours may not be realistic in terms of how much time it takes you, but that is how much time Front Range thinks about in terms of the workload for a three credit class. Um, you know, we're calculated at six hours for that. And a student, you know, the way we talk about students' workload is we tend to think that for a three credit class, a student is expected to spend two to three hours outside of class for every hour in class. So for a three credit class, that student's student would be expected to spend what um, three plus um, two to th two to three so I think that comes out to something like nine to twelve hours um, on a three credit class um, three of those hours in that kind of traditional model would be spent face to face and the other six to nine hours would be spent outside of class um, so if we're talking about um, instructor time this would be time spent independent of students. So this would be the prep work, the grading, the um, assessment that you're doing outside of class. Um, again, I think I just said this prepping um, and planning. Um, all of the stuff you're doing for your class that's not in class. This would be the time where you and your students are together. And this would be the time that a student is spending outside of class. So again, if we're thinking about that traditional uh, three credit face-to-face -face model, we would tend to think that three hours of the instructor's time and three hours of the student time is spent here. Um, I guess this would mean six to nine hours of homework and studying tends to happen here. And I guess in our theoretical model where a face-to-face um, -face or a class takes us six hours to teach, we would spend three hours teaching and three hours prepping and grading. Um, Right, in a nutshell. And even if it takes us more or less time than this, this model still holds. Um, I guess I'm thinking that in this kind of traditional lecture style class, when we think about the instructor time, content delivery including lecturing, I don't know, showing videos or whatever would, would happen here. And what else is happening in this three hours of, I want to call this hour time, I'm flashing back to uh, fast times at Ridgemont High and Mr. Han talking about my time, that classroom time, uh, but I'm really thinking that's our time, the student and instructor time. Um, I think the way the Higher Learning Commission is asking us as instructors to think about this is this is kind of that mediated class time, the time when the instructor is actively teaching, actively lecturing, or actively facilitating student work, right, facilitating learning. So this might be mediated time and um, independent instructor time and independent student time, something like that. The reason I put two hours here is I'm figuring even the best, even those of us who lecture a lot probably would say we don't lecture three hours a week for a you know, three hour a week class would probably say that there's at least some of this time that I'm doing something like um, 
I don't know, I'm doing some, some lecture discussion, so I'm doing some formative assessment of what the students are saying for part of that time. But then what's happening out here must be the, the prepping and planning and then the grading, at least, you know, we're, maybe we're doing some formative assessment in the class while we're watching students in small groups or we're giving them right to learns. But of course, the more time we're spending lecturing here, the less time we have to be actually be doing assessment in class, so that must be offloaded here. And if a student is listening to lecture or, or watching videos or something in class, then, you know, what are they doing out here? They must be, I don't know, reading and studying, doing homework, etc. So when we think about these different course models, um, let me go to my next slide here, uh, maybe I can. In this traditional class, that's what I've been talking about, right? How, how are we kind of informing ourselves and our students about the, the mission statement of the class and the way the course is designed? How are we allocating our time in terms of what's happening face-to-face -face versus our independent instructor time? And how are we allocating the students' time? I mean, if they're listening to lectures for three hours a week, then they must be doing homework or something else. Uh, something I'll talk about in a few minutes. I'm already six minutes in. I'm going to speed up here. Um, number one, I'm going to talk about this at the end, but I think we need to make sure we're informing ourselves and our students what we, what we have planned and what the expectations are. Um, but I think this kind of traditional model is what most of us have been doing the whole time, right? I mean, so this, I think, should make sense to us. I think where the difficulty comes in, um, I think this was actually supposed to be the flipped model. I don't know if I can get my, I'll go ahead and fix this in motion. You can see. Um, so when we do a flipped class, what does that mean? Now I've talked to several instructors who are really trying this flipped classroom model. One thing it definitely means is spinning these dials, right? I mean, whatever we're doing, as students and instructors, when we flip the classroom, what we're doing is we're reallocating the roles and responsibilities. So what we're probably doing is we're flipping some of the lecture that we were doing, this content delivery that we were doing, and we're going to offload that now and put that into student time, right? So we're either going to put our lectures online, we're going to have students read our lectures, they're going to watch screencasts, they're going to watch videos or something. So they're going to take that two hours of, of content acquisition that they used to get in class, and we're now going to flip that and spin it to student time, which, you know, which is awesome for us as faculty is we now get two hours where we used to be lecturing that we could do something else. And in a you know, really brilliant um, professional development I went to a couple of weeks ago, uh, my colleague and our colleague Kathy Ryan summarized this um, as making our students do lecturing at home and the homework in class. Now that's one way of thinking about it, but what I liked about it is it really um, concisely clarified what a flipped classroom model means. The same amount of mediated time, right, that three hours of time doesn't change, and the overall time that we're spending and students spending isn't changing. What must be happening is we're reallocating these objectives um, differently, right? We're, we're now saying, I'm gonna, here's what I think is happening in a flipped class. Since the st student is now doing the lecturing at home, right, they're getting those lectures at home, they're probably going to come to class and do some kind of active, active learning, student-centered learning, and because we as instructors aren't lecturing in class, we've offloaded that two hours of class time, um, we're not doing that anymore, that means we can do something else in that mediated time and most likely it's going to be this formative assessment and feedback. When our students are involved in student-centered active learning, when we're not lecturing, when they're doing the work in class, we're facilitating, right? We're sitting back, we're still teaching, but we're no longer delivering content. What we're doing is we're focusing on the teachable moment, we're watching students work problems, we're watching them work in small groups, we're watching them do presentations, we are watching them learn and because we're doing this kind of formative assessment, we're able to intervene either immediately with one-on-one -on -one interventions or think about how to change, you know, what's going on in the class because we're actually keeping our, you know, really keeping our thumbs on what's happening. We were doing, you know, in the traditional model, we were still doing, ideally, formative assessment, but we would have to do that looking at homework and we couldn't intervene quite as quickly. Um, let's move on here. Where am I? Um, flipped class? I think this should really be the hybrid class. Um, 
but you can imagine where I'm going here. For a hybrid class, we are now taking, we're shrinking the amount of face-to-face of -face time. So in a normal hybrid class that might have met, you know, 45 contact hours, we're going to do that in half and do, um, I don't know, whatever half of 45 is, or we're going to do a third of the hours online and two-thirds in class or something like that. What we're not doing when we do a hybrid class is we're not changing the course outcomes and we're not changing the workload for faculty and students. What it, prop what it must mean is we are taking, or again, we're, we're spinning these dials. It's probably the case in a hybrid class that this time is smaller, right? That face-to-face -face mediated time is less. May, that probably means, hopefully, that we're doing online mediated time because I don't think we want to give up teaching. Um, we want to probably, definitely want to flip that lecture because if we only have half the class time left, we probably don't want to quote unquote waste it on content delivery. We probably want to capitalize on that teachable moment, right? Uh, we want to make sure that students have done their due diligence. If we only get half of the mediated time that we had in the traditional class, we definitely need to find out what's happening here, what's happening here. We need to let students know since we only get, since our time is smaller, what you do on your time is even more important and what I do on my time is even more important. Um, exactly what that means, I don't know. Um, but it definitely means thinking clearly about how we're allocating the roles and responsibilities as we spin those dials and you know change how much mediated time at least in a face-to-face -face environment. Now in an online class you know what does this mean? Um, if this circle in the middle let me tell you some of the there are some online classes that I think are actually running like this. Let's see if, how, if I can do this. Um, they're like this. There's no face-to-face -face time, so we still have the same course outcomes. We still want to spend, we still expect students to spend the same amount of time, and we're hoping we're not spending tremendously more time than in the traditional face-to-face -face model. But in an online class, what are we doing and what are the students doing? And I'm just going to say, I don't think this is the model we want because this implies there is no mediated time. Um, this is really an independent model where students are doing their thing and we're doing our thing and we're trying to do summative and formative assessment and feedback and students are trying to do their own thing. Um, this can work possibly, but this is not the front range model. Um, let's see if I can get back. This is what we want. Even in an online class, we still want not necessarily three exact contact hours, but I think we, meaning students and faculty, want this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead here. What face-to-face -face model was used as the basis for a hybrid and online course design? Um, I'm going to go ahead and spill the beans here and tell you what I think. Um, I really think that we have used the traditional lecture style class as the model and we have done a hybrid of that or we've done an online class of that and I'm not sure that was the best choice um, regardless I think when we're thinking about online and hybrids we have to intentionally design the teaching into the course because otherwise I'm afraid that I won't um, I was having some conversations last week about teaching and these were with instructors that had spent a lot of time doing really robust course designs. And I had this great conversation with someone who was really, you know, um, upset that he thought he had designed his online course so well that maybe he had designed himself out of his course, right? He had offloaded so much of what he used to do as teaching into lecture, canned lectures that were great, but they were canned, you know, written and, and screencasted and video lectures and student um, websites that he was really thinking where where is the room for me in my course anymore so I think we want to design teaching into the course um, let me flip back here for a minute since I'm already over 15 14 minutes I'm gonna keep going and maybe someone's still watching and if nothing else this has helped me kind of frame what I want to think about in terms of following up with you more on this 
um, if we took a traditional course, lecture course, and we turn it into an online class, what do we do? This was the time where we used to lecture for two and a half hours a week. In an online class, we've rotated that lecture into the content area, right? We've, we're giving them the textbook or publisher resources, or we're giving them uh, screencasts, videos, narrated PowerPoints. So the students are learning that content independently. What are we doing? Where's the teaching? Now in this kind of ideal flipped model, we've rotated the lecturing to the students, but we still get that three hours of teachable moment, right? Where we are now spending much more time face to face doing formative assessment, giving formative feedback, which of course means we don't have to do that at home, right? That's lighting, lightening our grading load in a flipped class. We're doing most of our, maybe most of our assessment in general is happening in the class, which means less here. So in an online class, if we have rotated the lecture to the student time, that means, you know, what are we doing? How are we rotating some teaching or some mediated learning back into the class? That's what I've been, when I've been interviewing uh, online instructors for the last three weeks, I've been interviewing people and asking them what is online teaching? Really trying to get at those of us who have really worked hard to design our online classes, which probably means designing robust instructor content, what have we rotated around into this mediated area? Again, we don't want independent study classes. That is not the model that we're basing our front range classes on. It's not what students are signing up for. It's probably not what most of us want. So again, if I were to go back here, are we thoughtful enough about what it means to be a teacher in an online or hybrid class? And speaking for myself, I'm gonna say no. I mean, I have really, I've been teaching online for almost 20 years, and I'm only now really thinking about the fact that I have now rotated so much of my content into the student sphere, right, the stuff that I used to lecture about, I think I'm still grasping and trying to struggle to find out where's the teaching, right? Where is my role? Where do I get to be a teacher? And, you know, I'm really learning from you that many of you are finding really interesting ways to do um, formative assessment and formative feedback and capture that teachable moment in an online class, right? To really carve out that role for teaching, to let the technology do its work, to offload as much work as we can to online quizzes and publisher resources and videos. But I think that technology, it still leaves that hole here for, you know, and maybe that's a great, I don't want to call it a hole, meaning it's something bad. It's leaving a space for teaching and learning to happen. And we need to capture that space and find out what should go in here. What's happening here when we're teaching hybrid and online classes? And last but not least, um, can I manage to close out? Yes, before 20 minutes. I'm going to be planning some trainings or at least some, some, you know, sending out some food for thought for you in terms of how do we think for ourselves about how we're allocating our hours and our students' hours in instructor time, our time, student instructor time, and student time. And I really like the idea of these wheels and rot rotations. I'm going to work on that. But even if we know it for ourselves, I really think we need to let our students in on it. I think we can do a much better job informing our students about what an online class is like, what the roles and responsibilities are, what the outcomes are, what is the instructor doing in her time, what does the student need to do in his time, and what is going to happen in that mediated time, whether it's uh, class time, right, uh, in open discussion, or whether it's individualized instruction, but still, what's happening in that, in that hour time where that st the student and teacher are working together to do some sort of mediated instruction? That's what I'm interested in. Um, anyway, I'm going to close out now. If, um, if you're still listening, you know, send me an email, let me know, and I look forward to talking to you more about this.